we're going to purify our protein using a nickel agarose column. So this column is only useful if we have a histidine tagged protein, uh, but our protein in this case, the 6-HIS-PFU, uh, should work well using this method. So first we set up our column, and the column is just a syringe barrel. It's got some nickel agarose in there, which you can see has a blue color, and then some cotton wool at the bottom, and it's covered by parafilm at both ends uh, just to keep the column moist. So we need to take that parafilm off before we do anything else. We've attached it to the little clamp on the retort stand, and then we're just going to lower this so that it's just above our column waste bottle. It's very important to put that column waste there, or else we're going to make a big mess when it comes time to equilibrate and wash our column. Just make sure that waste bottle is centered under the column and lower it down so it's either just above or just inside the lip of that bottle. So our first task is to equilibrate the column and for this we use buffer B which is a low imidazole buffer. So in the presence of this buffer our E. coli proteins should not stick to the column but our protein of interest with the 6 his tags uh, should stick. We're going to use a transfer pipette for this also known as a squeezy bulb pipette and uh, this is just convenient to use, just easier to use than a Gilson. Uh, note that throughout this procedure we're not going to use kind of perfect aseptic techniques. So you may see Shang kind of put lids down on the bench or you know she may touch the tip of the pipette with her, her fingers and that's because what we're really doing here is biochemistry rather than microbiology and the need for aseptic technique is not quite as important. So we've got three mils of buffer B there we're going to now slowly add that to our column. And the key here is slowly and gently, carefully. Uh, what you don't want to do is squirt the buffer in really hard because uh, that will disrupt the bed of nickel agarose and the procedure won't work. So here comes our second three mils. So that's now a total of six mils that we've washed our column with. You can see it dripping out the bottom at about the same rate as it drips in the top. Here's the next three mils and that will take us up to now nine mils. Uh, of buffer going through the column. Again, adding it slowly and carefully to the top, sliding it down the side of the column. And then we're going to add one more mil, and that'll take us up to 10 mils of uh, equilibration buffer that's now passed through the column. So this removes any impurities from the nickel agarose, which is actually stored in a different buffer, and also from the cotton wool and from the syringe barrel itself and then the column will be ready to go to add our cell extract to. So here's our heat treated and centrifuged cell extract and it's now ready for affinity chromatography. We're going to use the P1000 pipette to get the uh, solution out of the tube here, just easier because the tip gets down better into the bottom of the tube than the transfer pipette does. Uh, but again, same idea of adding the cell extract gently and slowly to the top of the column. Once we've added all our cell extract, it's now time to wash the column again with another 10 mils of buffer B. So I've just speeded this up here. We don't need to see 10 mils of buffer B going through the column at real time again. But just another 10 mils slowly added to the top. So 3, 3, 3 and 1. And what that's doing is pushing off all the E. coli proteins. So these uh, do not stick to the column in the presence of buffer B with the low imidazole concentration, but our PFU protein should still be stuck onto the column. Okay, we're now going to remove the column waste because the next drips that come through we want to collect and they're going to have our PFU in them. We're going to catch the PFU protein in a 15 mil falcon tube and we're just going to sit that in a McCartney bottle so it sits up straight. Might need to adjust the height of the retort stand clamp here just so that the column sits down neatly inside the top of that falcon tube. And just be careful that it's positioned correctly so that our painstakingly prepared PFU protein does not go onto the lab bench and instead goes into the tube. So we're using buffer C now. This is the high imidazole buffer. And this high concentration of imidazole will now push off the histag protein off the column, eluting it into our catch tube. So we add three mils of buffer C, we collect what's left. So now what's come out the bottom of the column should be our histag PFU protein. And we just have to check how much we've got because this will help us later with our yield calculations. So we've collected about three and a half mils there. It should be, a bit, it should be close to three mils since that's what we added to the top of the column. So we're just going to write that on the tube here. We're also going to add that to our uh, lab archives notes. 
And the next stage is to transfer this partly purified protein into our dialysis tubing. So it's going to get the retort stand out of the way. We don't need that anymore. Here's our dialysis tubing. So this contains a membrane that has very small pores in it that are going to retain our protein on the inside, but the salts are going to go through into the outside solution. So we double over the end of the tubing and clip it tight into one of the yellow dialysis clips. Now comes the tricky part. So we have to open up the end of that dialysis tubing so you can see the hole at the end there and then pipette in our PFU protein solution using the P1000 pipette. You kind of need the P1000 for this because it's got a nice sharp tip that gets it down inside that tubing. So you have to be quite careful here, holding the tubing upright with one hand, pipetting with the other hand. This requires a little bit of manual dexterity and skill, so take it slow. You also have to kind of open up the tubing to help the solution get in there. So we've got a bit more than three mils, so it's going to take three or four goes with the P1000 to fill that tubing up with our uh, crude PFU protein preparation. And that solution should be gradually falling down into the bottom of the dialysis tubing as we load more and more of it into the top. As you can see, it's very important to clip the bottom first before adding our protein. So once we've squeezed out the air bubbles, we're going to then double over the other end of the tubing, clip it tight with the second dialysis clip. So now that tubing is tightly closed. We're going to add a piece of string with a label containing our initials on it. And then just tie that onto one of the dialysis clips. So our dialysis tubing is now ready to go into the dialysis buffer, which is in a large beaker. And then that's going to allow it, the salts to come out of the inside of the dialysis tubing and out into the dialysis buffer and purify our protein even further.